Hello, and you are back in the Velvet Room with Joker the Fool. This is our eighth episode, and today we'll be discussing spirituality in a godless world. And that's exactly what we're living in if you live in a first world Western nation, especially in the more urban areas, the New York Cities, the Los Angeles of the world. Uh, the culture there has embraced an extreme sense of nihilism it's just one worldly pleasure to the next one dopamine rush to the next and that's what your entire existence is structured around and it's a very empty unfulfilling life and it's caused uh, many people to basically just disengage with existing that's why the suicide rate is so high that's why mental illness is so high and the solution is just to shove a phone in your hand and pills in your mouth and uh you're on like i said one worldly pleasure to next, whether it's, you know, sex, drugs, or rock and roll, as it was in the 50s, but now, you know, the rock and roll is video games and pornography and all these things you use on the internet to forget um, the um, sad existence that you're living in. And it's only going to get sadder if you do not embrace the fact that there is something bigger than yourself, that there is much more uh, to human existence than the world, right? And... People do fundamentally understand and realize this, and they seek out religion at times, and they go to organize religion. These, um, you know, mega churches, these um, big pastors, that, these big rich pastors that have um, these multi-million dollar parishes, these uh, private jets and fancy cars and all these sorts of things. So they're living these this luxury lifestyle, luxurious lifestyle, and they're doing it off of the back of um of the church really so they are essentially false prophets and they are just as worldly as uh, anybody else but they disguise themselves as being godly and being um people who you should look up to if you want to experience spiritual enlightenment and that just um isn't going to happen when you go for that so that's where um, a lot of people are very um jaded with the idea of religion and spirituality is that they associate it with um, the worst um, aspect, the worst of the worst in organized religion, the, the pedophiles in the Catholic Church, so like I said, these um, telepreachers or whatever um, you, you call it, the people running the, uh, the mega churches who are just doing it for um, money and influence, which is um, the exact opposite reason you get into um, preaching the word of, uh, of God. You're doing it because you're called to do so, and you do that regardless of um, any worldly um, rewards. In fact, you do it in spite of that. You walk a narrow path. You set the standard of I am going to be um, faithful to uh, the re religion that I follow even uh, when you're persecuted, even when um, the whole world comes out against you and condemns you and takes everything away from you or they try to. Um, it, the people who do that are the ones who are the most godly in my mind if we're going off of the um, you know, being godly in a Christian sense, right, which is where I base my perspective um, from this. I guess I'll go into my personal beliefs on this. I was agnostic my entire life, but I would say now I'm an agnostic uh, theist, as in I don't know if God exists. I don't have um, the faith um, that God exists in the sense, you know, as, you know, God of the Bible, Yahweh and his son Yeshua and um, you know, the heavenly kingdom existing, all that stuff. That's not something I can say for certain exists, but I, I choose to believe anyway because I, I, as I'm saying, you need to believe in something greater than yourself. And even if that is just um, nature or the power of the universe, you want to disengage from thinking um, of everything as being worldly, as your consciousness being not o the only thing that exists in this world. Uh, that is what you want to really desperately get away from if you want to experience true self-actualization. Now, this doesn't mean you have to be Bible-thumping or um, stoning people who are gay or, or all these sorts of things that um, you do um, if you're a, a fundamentalist, right? So I think fundamentalism is a big problem where you live by the word to, um, to the letter, you're trying to, you know, go back to biblical times in every sense of the word. I mean, you look at uh, the Middle East is a very regressive culture, and that's because they um, follow the Quran to a T. And now, you know, you can argue there are certain benefits uh, of doing that in terms of the community being more tight-knit, in terms of being able to hold more to traditional values. But I think there are severe 
um, disadvantages that outweigh the positives. But of course, we could debate that all day. But that's the perspective I'm coming from as an agnostic theist, someone who is using religion as a way to enrich my ability to self-actualize, as a way to um, detach from the need to engage with worldly pleasures to experience um, that self-actualization that's so important. You talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? The um, way you fulfill needs. The last one is self-actualization, understanding and realizing yourself. That's not only just um, understanding who you are, but understanding the world, understanding the nature of existence. And that comes with um, understanding that you can't understand everything and that there is a force is much greater than you that do know what's going on and you can only put your faith that um, they'll do right by you. Uh, and that's really a um, sense that that's really what you have to do. And that's a, a lifelong process for just about everybody. It's going to express um, differently in different ways. Of course, the fundamentalists, fundamentalists will say um, everything is known. Um, if you just put faith into, um, you know, my book, my um, man wearing the magic robes or um, my God or, you know, whatever it um, particularly is. And, you know, we've got the rise of uh, secular fundamentalism now with um, leftists, uh, these, you know, liberal leftists that worship, you know, feminism and transgenderism, all these sorts of things. And they follow it to the T like a religion. And that's um, really the um, set of doctrine you have to follow. And that's, you know, part of um, why so many people are so nihilistic, because the idea of religion has been so warped and tainted by so many people, whether they are call themselves religious or not. Um, this is what we are dealing with as a society and it's fundamentally destroying a lot of people. So you, this is the reason why the suicide rate is so high because people are just selling their souls to feel good, right? So Mark 8, 36, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul? And so many people are selling their souls um, for that next dopamine hit, for that next um, rush of pleasure. And they um, degrade the, uh, themselves sexually, uh, morally, financially, uh, all, any sort of way just to experience that next um, worldly pleasure. And that's all it is about because you think the world is all I ever know. It's all I'm ever going to know. It's the most important thing and I have to prioritize it when you have to come to the realization that the world is just that. It is one aspect of human existence and there's a lot more to it than just um, being um, of the world. You have to be in the world but not of the world and that's a very difficult thing to do because as I just mentioned the world is all you know until you find out what happens um, afterwards which you know we can get into discussing whether an afterlife actually exists or not but to you know be in the mindset that there is something beyond um, consciousness that you have to um, protect is definitely something that's going to keep you out of um, true despair and nihilism. So, so many people just think that, you know, it's it um, when you die. There's no um, greater um, reason to care about um, existence once your consciousness ceases to end. And I think there's more to that, you know. I think part of what holds people through um, the idea of um, being able to live on after death is having children. Of course, you know, you have the idea of an afterlife that your consciousness is connected to your soul and that will join the kingdom of heaven and you'll be able to experience eternal life, right? But, you know, you also have children and they live on through you and you care for them and that keeps you um, grounded. It keeps you detached from yourself. But so many people don't have kids, so many people don't have families and so many people who um are, um, you know, single and childless, they don't even see the value of family. So human humanity in any society has been built off this holy trinity of the man, the woman, and their children, and we have completely destroyed that in the modern West. And people feel that, and people feel the loss from that, and they use um, worldly pleasures to cope with the fact that they can't um, have that, build that, or even... Um, realize that it's something that they truly want um, because they've been so warped and melded by um, by the world to believe that that trinity is unimportant. In fact, it's detrimental to humanity. And um, engaging with um, bad, unhealthy, ungodly habits is 
what's going to um, save you when you have to realize that, like I said, you need to be in the world, but not of the world. So it's a very um, simple idea, but it's going to be something that when you realize this um, idea that there is a lot out there that's greater than yourselves, and, you know, whether this is, you know, a specific religion or just um, accepting, you know, believing in the universe, believing in nature, these sorts of things, you need to realize that there's a lot more out there than just you, uh, and you need to act accordingly. So it's, it's a very simple um, episode. I don't have much to say um, other than that. So I'm still figuring this out so much, and like I said, I'm an agnostic theist, so I don't say anything with absolute certainty, and that's kind of my shtick is that I'm very uh, vague with a lot of things. It's, uh, it's a good um, tactic to always be right, in a sense. Um, but I will leave it here. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know it was a bit of a shorter one, but we're going to move on to the outro now. Thank you for being in the Velvet Room with Joker the Fool. Be sure to follow my substack, velvetroompublishing.substack.com, to read Machine to Man and all my other projects.